Thanks for staying with us. Now, for the next 45 minutes, we will be sitting with an amazing leader as we discuss women leadership and mentorship, as we understand what this means and what role it plays towards nation building. And here's what we found. Today, we have special quotes for today as our first quote for today. Um, women need to shift from thinking, I am not ready to do that, to thinking, I want to do that, and I'll learn by doing it. That's from Cheryl Stanberg, for, um, the COO of um, Facebook. Uh, so before I bring in our guests, in two minutes, Uti, why do women always shy away from positions of leadership? I don't necessarily know that it's a, it's a leadership in general. I think that, I, I've said it on the show before, that when you take a woman and you take a man, if a man is 50% ready, he's ready to jump in and like, I can do this. But a woman is like 95% ready and she's, and still, she's still thinking, telling you, I, I can't, can't do this. To go. Yeah, you know, so you doubt yourself. And I, even I personally have struggled with that. I literally broke that hold on myself when I one day just said to myself, look, what's the best thing and strongest thing about you? And it was the fact that I was a quick learner. So I said, you know what, if I don't know it, throw me in there. I will pick it up quickly and I'll run with it. And it just changed my perspective on taking on things. So I used to be that person about, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'm not ready. And that's what a lot of women struggle with. We keep sort of thinking, I'm not ready yet. And because a lot of us are perfectionists, hmm. we keep thinking, I have to be perfect at this. I, I need to be ready. No, we've learned. But you, you grow we'll by learning. Up, but we'll be all right. <laughs> we're, we're learning. Tell me, let me hear your thoughts. What do you think? <laughs> Why do women shy away from leadership positions? Well, I, I don't know that women actually shy away from the leadership position. Uh, I think that usually with a lot of, I haven't done any experiment, but I know that I can speak from my own perspective uh, to say that I find that a lot of women actually take up leadership positions. So I'm not sure that many men, maybe maybe there are many women. You know, you, you are I think generation, what's your changing, generation again? Especially with Gen, young people Gen like Z. me. I know yeah, yeah. young people no. are taking up leadership. Don't worry, it's not people I, like well, you. Are, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Tammy. I said it's not people like you we are targeting because your generation, you who are taking on position, and we're very proud of you. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> All right, so let me bring it out again. All right, then. Adeolu Adeolumiza is the managing director and CEO of Alliance Nigeria Insurance Limited, headquartered in Lagos, a position she assumed in September 2020. She is a global strategist and transformation leader who has held a number of key executive positions within the Alliance Group based in three different continents. Prior to serving in her current role, Adeolu was the regional head of mergers, acquisition and transformation Africa for Alliance Group and was appointed the first female board member of Alliance Nigeria in 2019. She has worked since 2000 in global finance services across numerous mature and emerging markets beginning her career in the USA. As a Nigerian and self-ascribed Afro-optimist <laughs> with absolute conviction in the immense potential existing within the African continent, she does her part to prepare Africa's sons and daughters by coaching, mentoring and sponsoring tomorrow's leaders both live and via her podcasts, webinars, conferences and publications while volunteering uh, mentoring services to several organizations. In addition to her responsibilities at Alliance, Adeolu is married with two children in her, uh, in her limited spare time. She is a life, please want to see her run, she's a lifelong runner and a voracious leader and loves discovering new countries and cultures. So might I add, she's the perfect CEO to be having this chat with this evening and she's joined us live in studio. Thank you so much for joining us, Adeolu. Thank you, ladies. It's great <laughs> to be here. Awesome. All right, so please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Way Show or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 all right, so thank you again. I mean, she's just perfect. She came in like 30 minutes earlier than her call time. <laughs> <laughs> you are just the perfect CEO and so simple. You know, tell me, what's your style? Because I was just telling Uti, by the way, she was Uti's boss before Uti decided to, to leave us. <laughs> to jump ship. <laughs> All right, so I, 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 was just, I was just telling Uti, I was actually gossiping. I said, Uti, she's so simple. She's, she doesn't look like the, the CEO of the company. You know, Tell us why and uh, what your style of leadership is and why you chose that style of leadership. Well, for me, it's very simple. My, my style is really a lot of around servant leadership. 
and becoming a mother seven years ago really solidified my mm -hmm. leadership style in many ways because the way I treat my children, the way I support my children, the way I scold my children but love them every minute of the day is the way that I also handle my team, mm -hmm. handle my company, and handle my colleagues. So uh, I've, I've heard the term, you know, the, you're the motherly type, th those kind of things, mm -hmm. and that really is my style. I just treat my, my team, my colleagues, like my family. Awesome. Hey, God help us. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could get more servant leaders in the country. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, I mean, we've talked about this so many times, about the value of servant leadership and how it really helps to develop people. But I'd, I'd like to just expand on that question a little bit. Most times, women are viewed as emotional there's all these negative connotations about women in the workplace that sometimes affect how women can be viewed as leaders so what's your thought around that in terms of how women can crack this leadership space because like you said we have that nurturing instinct we're perfect to be leaders mm -hmm. so where's the, the disconnect well for me i think the disconnect was the way the job market was and work was seen in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's changing. That has changed even before COVID, but that has changed even more with COVID, where the current generation or the new generation com coming into the workforce, they're looking for different things. They're not looking to put their nose to the grindstone and work 100 hours uh, a week mm -hmm. so that they can make it to the top. Mm -hmm. They want life. They, they want to live life. So they're working to live, not living to work. Mm -hmm. And this is something that women do naturally. I mean, we're able to balance our personal lives and our professional lives. We're forced to, in fact, yeah. so even that we, ha we have the choice. We're forced by society to do this for, for generations. For, for, so for us, it comes very naturally. Okay, okay so I saw a tweet. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I'm hearing her speaking, it's telling me, no, this is not Nigerian leader. <laughs> and um, my very own mentor, Sam Adeyemi, he tweeted today, he had a series of tweets. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I screen grab this and put it on my status. It says the average African is raised in a difficult environment and eventually develops unconscious bias for hardship. I saw that. It then, um, it then does not bother him to inflict hardship on others. When things work too easily, he can be suspicious and afraid that things may go bad soon. So here am I thinking, I'm looking at you, that I don't think... Um, your environment must have played a very huge impact in this style of leadership that you cho you've chosen. Maybe you should tell us a bit of, little bit about your background because I know this thinking that you're thinking is not the African, <laughs> it's not the African CEO. Well, <laughs> you know, because we like to be, you know, we like mm. to make, and we like to lord it over people that we are in charge, we're mm. the boss, you know. And I see this all the time, and I'm saying that it doesn't have to be this way. No. You know, people feel like if I'm too easy on you, then it doesn't show that I'm a boss. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get the job done. Maybe you should help us expatiate that. You know, tell us a little bit about your background and, you know, tell people that it's possible to be this kind of leader and at the same time get the job done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so both my parents are Nigerian. I'm Nigerian. My parents are Nigerian. So I come, I was raised in an African, so to say, a family. And... But maybe my, my father is not the typical Nigerian father. And as the oldest of five children, I was always pushed to be the best, mm -hmm. to achieve the best. Uh, you know, like 99 is not 100. I think our, fa our fathers maybe come from the same generation. <laughs> yeah. I, I heard uh, uh, versions of that all my life. And, and my father also did very well in his life. He, he was the first one college educated in his family. Uh, he did very well in the U.S. He's still working at 68 and has a top job. He, so he retired from the university as uh, a vice provost and then went on to a bigger job yeah. <laughs> in his retirement, right? And yet, throughout all that, people always loved my dad because they always said, he's so humble. I can talk to him. He's so easy to talk to. And this is the role model that I had. My dad never put on airs. Even though he was this important guy, he would be in his khakis and his polo, and nobody could even notice. Hmm. Oh my god. Send me, let me come to you. <laughs> Gen Z in the house. Uh, Gen okay, Z. so I, I think it's really nice that we have the first female CEO on the show today. And my, my question would just be about, you know, being a lady, being a woman in you know, this big position, whether you've had to face challenges 
that are specific to being, you know, to just be because you're female, you know, as a female, have you ever been discriminated against just because you're female in your role? Have you had to prove yourself twice as much because you're female? I would like to hear your story, particularly because the thing is women leadership and mentorship, because I hope that it will draw some or provide some strength to other women who are also listening in. So, Tammy, I have to disappoint you. I don't have one of those horror stories that you hear from so many of, of my female colleagues where uh, they, they really felt mistreated as, as a woman. However, it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It prob probably what it means is that I just came from such a strong background. I had such support from my family that I didn't even notice. So growing up in the U.S., I was always the only one, the only something, the only black person in the room, the only woman in the room, moving to Germany, same thing. So throughout my career, throughout my life, I've always been the only one. So perhaps that, that sort of protected me so that I, I was able to ignore whatever signals people had or there was a self-confidence that, that said that people didn't dare to say certain things that they would say to other women. I don't know, but what I do know is that I understand the pain a lot of my fellow women colleagues feel and this is one of the reasons that I do stand here, do sit here, because I want women to know that it's possible. Anything is possible. So don't let the fact that you're a woman or the fact that society outlines certain roles for you stop you from doing whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be to become a CEO, but whatever it is that you want to do, go for it. That's my message to you. Absolutely. So, I mean, that just comes directly to where my thought process was. So I like what you said about women feeling like they're not ready. And I think that one of the things when I started my career very early on, I looked at the women who I knew in leadership and I asked myself the question, do I want to be any of these women? Mm -hmm. And it was a resounding no for various different reasons. But I kind of felt like I didn't know if I wanted to be a leader if I was capable of being a leader. And I feel like a lot of women fall into that bucket. Like we, we feel like being at the helm of affairs of everything, even though we do it in our homes and with our families every day, we still feel like we're not capable. How can women start to change that mindset? Because you obviously had a father who was a role model for you to sort of aspire to that kind of thing. But how do women start to change that mindset? So believe it or not, despite that upbringing, despite the fact that I was always ambitious, always had to get straight A's and be the first in a race and everything, when I joined my first job, I really looked at the sacrifices the woman up there had to make. And I thought, this is not for me. I can't sacrifice everything to get to the top. So there was a long period of my life where I thought, OK, I'm happy to be number two. Let someone else be the face of the company. Let someone else have all the stress. I'll just work d diligently in the background and still have my home life. And, you know, in order to flip that script for myself in the, in the last, let's say, five to seven years, uh, is to realize that I could do it if I had the right support system. Mm -hmm. I could, I mean, a lot of people talk about having it all, whatever it all is, but I can't have a lot mm -hmm. because I have people supporting me, my spouse supporting me, my um, family supporting me, and paid support. So to, 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 to build that uh, network so that we can balance work and play. Because the, 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 the point is that we as women have to take more. Mm. We can say it's unfair, but that's the current society. Yeah. That does, th th yes, that's a lot. So there just, just uh, one of the articles, so a number of articles talk about the mental burden that women take. Mm -hmm. So even if your spouse, your, your husband uh, is, is helping you out at home, who is the one who thinks about doctor's appointments? Who is the one who thinks mm -hmm. about, oh, my child has a school play, so I need to plan to, it's usually the woman. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of brain space. Yeah. Hmm. You didn't know that. Please tell them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we are going to take a, a very short break because this uh, conversation is getting interesting. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.